Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Luis. I'm a third year medical student from the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health, and this is the fifth installment in my ongoing series, Med School Deep Dive, where I interview different medical students from around the Philippines about their experiences of being a student at their respective medical school. In this episode, I interview my friend Katrina, or Katfell, about their experiences of being a student at the St. Luke's College of Medicine. But before we start this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it really supports the channel. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. Okay, so hey guys, so now I'm joined by Katina Feliciano, one of my uh, course mates from UP. So, uh, Katpel, can you introduce yourself to the audience? Um, hi, I'm Katina Feliciano. I'm an incoming second year med student from St. Luke's. And uh, yeah, um, my undergrad course, in, yeah, like Louise said, was PS Psychology. Okay, so to kick things off, Kat, uh, Katrina, it's like, uh, why did you decide to attend uh, St. Luke's College of Medicine? Um, I wanted to attend St. Luke's because I heard a lot of nice things about it. Like, for example, that um, the learning environment is very healthy and um, non-competitive, and that the facilities of the school were also really nice, um, that the education was pretty good also, like a good curriculum, good teachers, good teacher to student ratio, mm -hmm. and also for the scholarship opportunities. So uh, those were the main reasons. Okay. So uh, how would you describe your experience in studying in uh, St. Luke's? Have, given you've studied there now for over a year, how would, uh, can you describe like what the curriculum is in St. Luke's? Um, well, for first year, we have the more basic subjects, which is like biochem, Tisho, Anat, um, PrevMed, and um, we also have this subject called Foundations of Medicine, which is kind of like an integration subject for all, all our classes. And then we study clinical cases. So it's kind of like an introduction to medicine, like I am. And um, in St. Luke's, kasi, it's a block system. Na parang, there are six blocks throughout the year. And for each block in first year, um, the block tackles a certain organ system. So like first block was... MSK, second was cardio, third was recipe, etc. Mm. And yeah. So that's what the curriculum's like. Okay, so like is because like in contrast, like my school is mojo based. So how is um where our exams are like on a weekly basis? So like what are the exams like in uh, St. Luke's? Is it weekly basis or do you have a different schedule? Uh weekly as in every week or like yeah, because we have a major ex like are you the are your major exams weekly or is it the more spaced out? Oh, um, it's spaced out. Like, um, each block is lasts usually around a, a month to six weeks, and at the end of each block is an exam week. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, um, the exams last five days, and then usually uh, there's a weekend in the middle of the five days, and then yeah, exams on the whole day. So how would you describe like the teaching philosophy of um, the St. Luke's College of Medicine? Like, are they um, more, like, hands-on? Or would you, like, think that they're more, um, like, lecture, like, like, they just give you the knowledge and then kayo na bahala? I would say that we're pretty lecture-based, but then we also have activities that go beyond the lecture. Um, like, for example, we're pretty research heavy. Like we have two major in first year, palang we already had two major research papers in biochem and PubMed. So we really got to apply like the things that we learned in class. And then we mm -hmm. also have a lot of um, SGDs where we try to discuss cases and stuff with our mm -hmm. batchmates. And yeah, lab subjects the usual. So yeah, lecture based. But then I I would say we also have other activities besides the lecture. How about like uh, clinical skills? Like, do you get to learn clinical skills in first year or is that something reserved for your second and third years? Um, I would say, yeah, mostly it's the second year. Mm -hmm. So um, in first year, we have, um, we have a patient-centered interview experience already where we get to um, talk to a patient and simulate an interview. And okay. then, yeah. So you know like the basics also, now? So you know, like the basics now of uh, patient history. Um, not enough, not yet. Like not enough to do it on your own. But then, medyo like nasubukan mo naman konte, like guided by a pro. Mm. Yeah, by a pro. And um, siguro in org, because we have med missions in our org. So if you have the chance to join those, usually the upper class will teach you 
So that's that's the exposure that you get in first year. Mm, okay. Um. So besides just uh, your uh, learning opportunities like within the curriculum, do you have does the school provide you with opportunities like to learn on your own initiative, such as like uh, research opportunity, like research assistant jobs, research opportunities, or like the possibility of like taking electives abroad? Um, for research assistant jobs, I'm not really sure if we have those. But then, um, in St. Luke's, alam ko, there is a program na you can take a few masters in molecular biology also, like a double degree program. So you could opt to do that. And then, um, for the electives abroad, I'm not really sure if there's one that's organized by St. Luke's as well. Pero alam ko that we have like um, a lot of international uh, ties to international institutions, although I'm not sure if it's for taking subjects. Pero I think what a lot of SOCM students do if they want to go abroad is that they take they apply for professional exchange under AMSA, yung mm. branch ng AMSA in SOCM. So that's Sagip Bayan, that's the org. And then you, know, you apply for SCOPE so you can take your internship, I think, abroad. Okay, so uh, going back to like that uh, master's degree, in, like in again, molecular medicine, um, molecular. is that some is that something that you apply for while applying to the school, or you apply for it separately once you're admitted into Saint Luke's? Um, you apply for it when you're applying for the school. Okay, so you you apply for it for both the medical and the masters at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Given like we've already, we've transitioned right now to distance learning because of the ongoing pandemic. Uh, what are the challenges you face in adapting to this landscape change, and what have you done to overcome to try to overcome the challenges you face? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges I've faced so far is um, trying to maintain that boundary between work and home, or like work-life boundary. Because you know, you're always connected, you're always available to. Um, chats for, about work and about school, and medyo na ako burnout ngayon. Pero um, I guess to try to tackle that, I try to set work hours then within a day. Like even if my to do list isn't completely done, if I'm not done by a certain time, I'm gonna stop for it because I know that I'm gonna. Um, parang it's gonna take a toll on me if I don't do that. So yun. Um, aside from that, I also. It um it was kind of a challenge then uh, to not see your classmates in school and to see people in person when you're learning. So for me, parang um the distance learning um kind of lacks depth, I guess, or parang hindi mo shadow na consolidate yung learning mo. Because for me, I found in med that a lot of learning can be done collaboratively and socially. Like, um, not just in terms of, like, high-yield SGDs and stuff, but also, like, consulting with profs in after class or, like, asking your classmates to explain certain topics, discussing cases. And um, I guess, ayun, like, learning from each other. And I guess that was something that was really lessened because of the distance learning. Yeah. So, and, yeah. Mm, hey, go. Uh, you have more to add, pa? Oh, you know the mind. Okay. Yeah, so that, I'd have to agree with you on that because when you're... You know, you wake up and study basically in the same room every day. It's so hard to find that boundary. And like, given that we're in a, like, we're in a co- career path that relies heavily on our skills, like, it's really hard to do this online because you know there's no immediate feedback. So yeah, that's definitely something that you need. You need to like develop the, like, you need to some really really adapt to, especially with like social with the social aspect of it. Mm-hmm. So. Having studied in uh, medicine for more for uh, more than a year now, do you have any advice for any uh, medical students and um, for incoming medical students and medical students in general? Um, I think the main or most important thing I could say is that early on, try to know um, what kind of learning or study technique works the best for you. Like, um, it's, it's something that not a lot of people pay attention to until you go to med. Very the time we learned about it inside, like, med yeah. And, you know, it's very important to know what works best for you because, you know, you want to have a lot of time, most of the time. 
And not only do you have to allot it well, but you also have to make sure that the time that you do get to allot is used as efficiently as possible. Like you don't want to waste time on like super shallow studying and stuff. So you want to be aware of what works best for you early on. Yeah, I think what some I think what some med students tend to fear is like trying out new things because like they tend to revert to what's comfortable, what they knew back in college, and then that. And they're not, they're afraid of trying out new things when it in fact will probably help them more in med school. It's like I think the advice there really is that, you know, um, experiment with different learning styles, especially yeah. in first year. Cause yeah, as early as possible. Yeah, because once you find your groove, like it will it, like because there's like no one size fits all. Like eh? it you have to mm-hmm. you have to learn what, what is the best approach for certain subjects. Yeah. Yeah, and related to that, parang um you have it's important to know what works for you early on because sometimes you're going to see your classmates doing stuff like you know, making flashcards and doing all these elaborate study techniques and you're going to feel pressured. But then you also have to remember that, okay, that's what works for them. If what works for me is different and you have to be sure of that. Or at least for me. Yeah, because like, it's all about finding what, what works for you. Because like, I, have, I have classmates who have like odd their odd learning habits and like you you might find it weird but if it works for them it works for them yeah exactly okay so moving on to like um outside the man of academics like what is like campus culture like in your school like what is it like to be a student outside the classroom with all the extracurriculars in St. Luke's College of Medicine um for the extracurriculars I would say we have a pretty active org culture. Like, we're really encouraged that we get to join a lot of orgs and participate. Like, um, we have an org for, one org for every field, I guess. Like, we have the Gift Bayan, which is the branch of AMSA. So that's our social civic org. Then we have mm-hmm. the Musician Circle, um, the Choral, or the Glee Club, mm-hmm. the BC, for the, dan- uh, the dancers, the Athletics Guild, um, agape, which is for people who are very religious. Um, teatros, which is for people who are into like art, photography, writing. Um, and then the student council. And the molecular medicine org. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and, um, we're really encouraged to join those extracurricular activities. And um, we have a good um, roster of org events throughout the year, which you can attend. So yeah, and it's, it's a good stress reliever and a good way to make friends outside of like, your batch. Okay, so like speaking to like making friends outside of your batch, like given that um, St. Luke's doesn't really have a prominent, like it's not part of like the big four schools here in the Philippines or among the undergraduate programs. So like what are the, what is like the student body mostly composed of in terms of their undergraduate background? Um, actually, like it's a pretty good mix of like people from UP, Learn and people from Ateneo, USD, and other you know, provincial schools. So, okay naman siya. Um, yeah. So, like, how do you uh, say, um, so how have you, how would you say, like, have you um, diversified your uh, social circles as a result of, like, meeting these people from different undergraduates, uh, undergraduate programs? Oh, yeah. Um, for sure, like, Especially compared to our undergrad, where in psych, where everyone is kind of similar. Yeah. Um, it was nice to meet people who are like from different provinces or like um, from different schools that aren't the big four. So, yeah, you um, really learn a lot from them. Mm. Um, so, having uh, been um, part of your school, like having been in your school for more than a year now, it's like, What's uh, one thing that you really like about uh, being in school, in St. Luke's College, in on-campus meeting? Um, I think that the thing that I appreciate most about St. Luke's is that, to me at least, I feel like the environment is very healthy, or at least as healthy as a med school can, can get. Mm-hmm. Um, like, first of all, you have props who really care about your well-being, like, um, there are some props that again, if they know that your load is really heavy, they're going to be, um, they're not going to expect, they're not going to pressure you so much or they're going to move the deadline of the requirement because they know it's all about stress in the young batch. Um, our admin also, like most of the time, they're very open to having a dialogue with us and to um, having us air out our concerns. Um, the upperclassmen are also really nice and they're really willing to teach you. Like, before block exams, usually they really 
um, plan these tutoring sessions where they teach the most, the hardest topics and give tips. And then um, in general, like in my batch and probably in other batches, um, there's a very supportive and non-competitive atmosphere. Na parang everyone really just wants to help each other to pass and to get along. Um, and so, even if like you're surrounded by a bunch of like stellar classmates and sobrang galing, you don't feel pressured because you know that um, everyone wants to help each other succeed lang. And yeah, and I guess that really helps na parang kahit pagod na pagod ka na sa akads, you don't have to worry about um, any toxicity from your batchmates. Mm. So that, for me, I really appreciate it. Yeah, like, like, because I'm like a really big advocate of med med school being uh, collaborative rather than competitive. Because like in the end, like we're all going to be colleagues in the in the hospital yeah. anyway. So like it's better to develop that, that camaraderie as early as school rather than you know developing once we're all working. Mm-mm, for sure. Okay. So as a follow up question to that, like. What's uh, one thing you wish your school would add in the near future or like, yeah, would add in the near future within your remaining stay in St. Luke's? Hmm. Uh, first, more seats in the library. Because <laughs> I really, you know, um, the facilities are really nice, but I kind of wish the library had more seats. <laughs> um, oh, is, but, <laughs> huh? Is your library small? Um... I wouldn't say it's small, but then it get it can get really filled up and hard, it's hard to find seats then sometimes, like for exam week. Okay. It's like, because a lot of people there prefer to tend to study in the library compared to going out. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause the library is, it's really nice to study there. Um, okay. Aside from that, um, uh, this isn't really something that will affect me, but then I think it would be nice also if first years also you know, had more Basic encounters or like learned more practical knowledge in first year pa lang. Um, yeah, parang that's this that's something that I wish they had more. Yeah, because like I in in my school in ASMPH, first year pa lang, we we learned the basics of like physical examination. Like we know the techniques now mm-hmm. for song and like we have a like a mini oske. Uh, so okay. it's like that's like that's one big difference I see in my school compared to other schools where um, the priority and like the timeline in learning the clinical skills tend to be later. Like they usually start in second year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most most schools start in second year, whereas like my school and I think UPCM start in first year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, before we end this interview, is there anything that you'd like to promote to the audience? Advocacy, social media. Um, I guess I just like to promote um. Uh, Bagong Gawi. Have you heard of Bagong Gawi? Um, it's an online health education campaign which aims to educate Filipinos on how to live in the pandemic, like in the new normal. And yeah, we have infographics in different languages, not just in English, but also in Filipino, Cebuano, and then some in Ligaynon and Ilocan. So, oh. ayun. You guys can follow that for more information on like, you know, um, waste on how to maintain hygiene and like um, other practical information that might be helpful during these times. So you is, can follow. Oh yeah. Is this an effort of uh, St. Luke's students or is it a collaboration between different medical students? Uh, different medical students and a few undergrads. Okay. Yeah. So this is like mm-hmm. a student initiative outside of yeah. school. Okay. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, you can follow us on Facebook, Fabian Bowie. And Instagram also. So, uh, for those of you watching, I will leave links in the description to yes. um, the pages that uh, Katrina mentioned. So, if you want to check those out, go check out the links in the description. Okay, thank so you. thank you for your time today, Katel, for your break. Okay, I hope I wish you the best in um, uh, as you enter second year and uh, stay safe. You too, you too, Ingat Luis. I hope you guys learned a lot from watching this video about what it's like to be a student at SLCM. All relevant information mentioned during the video will be linked down in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to also leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.